when I first saw the headline for this year's class, and many of you saw this, it said five female legends being inducted into UT Martin's Hall of Fame in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of Title IX, which was also extremely exciting. As you, the five going in, join a list of impressive UT Martin female athletes and administrators that goes all the way back to Betty Giles, the Title IX pioneer, and how fitting that this is here in the 50th anniversary and she was a pioneer, not only at our school, but nationally. It's a tremendous story. And then Pat Summit, one of the winningest coaches in the history of basketball at UT Martin, uh, played basketball and in her coaching career. I looked this up and it was phenomenal to me. Won 1,098 games and only lost 208. And I knew that, but when I saw it again, I read it again, and that's an 841 win percentage, and that is phenomenal. Lynn Dunn, the Olympic gold medalist and WNBA championship coach and current GM of the Indiana Fever. So a long list of great female athletes and administrators at UT Martin, you are going to join that Hall of Fame class today. Most recently, Chelsea Perry, who will someday be in the Hall of Fame, signed to play overseas at Italy, uh, was drafted in the WNBA by the Fever and represented the WNBA and the University of Tennessee at Martin at the White House at Easter this past year. So, so very, very exciting. I also want to say it's a bit bittersweet for me because I've emceed this event for a long time and always in the audience was Phil Dane. And Phil Dane passed away this past week uh, after a battle with cancer, uh, former director of athletics at UT Martin. A lot of people in this room would not be here without Phil Dane. I know our athletes that are here were competing when Phil was here and he loved this event. One of the last texts he ever sent to Ryan Rickman and to our uh, administration and sports information was asking, who's going into the Hall of Fame this year because I'm looking forward to being there. And then when Ryan O told him about the Title IX and the class, he was, he was certainly excited. I want to say one thing that he used to say to me whenever he first came here. He had big dreams and aspirations coming from a different department at the university. And if ever a problem arose, Phil would always say, that ain't no step for a stepper. And you're a stepper. And I didn't understand that. I was too young to understand that. And even now, I understand it, but I didn't have a definition of it. So I looked it up. And a stepper is a person who is passionate about what you're doing. And ain't no step for a stepper means when you're passionate about what you're doing, no obstacle will stand in, in your way. And we see that with our athletes that are being inducted today. Phil lived this, took our university to places we are continuing to go with the current administration and he will forever be missed. And I promise you, if this is being streamed in heaven, he's watching right now. <laughs> Hall of Fame. Congratulations to the Hall of Famers. Um, I kind of say this every single year in different ways, and every year I think I'm not going to say this again, but I'm going to say it again. And Andrika, I'm going to pick on you. All right, I'm sorry. Andrika is probably the quietest of all those being inducted. And, and I'm just going to pick on you right now because now that you're a Hall of Famer, you're no longer Andrika Jackson. You're now Hall of Famer Andrika Jackson. Like you have a title before your name, and you have to use it with family and friends, and they from now on have to call you Hall of Famer Andrika Jackson and demand it. Yes, and all of you Hall of Famer. I'm serious. I don't know the numbers, but I, I, I assume one out of every 100,000 people in the world are a Hall of Famer. That's not many. I don't know if that's true or not. It might be one in a million. I don't know, but you're a Hall of Famer now. So put it on your debit card, right? <laughs> right? If you ever sign a check, sign it Hall of Famer Andrika Jackson. When you're at Olive Garden and they ask you for your name because you want a table, I'm Hall of Famer Andrika Jackson, I promise you, you'll get in and get your table quicker than you will if they didn't know you were a Hall of Famer. They'll be scrambling, Googling you. Hall of Famer. Wow, so it's, it's really a big deal. Now to say all that, I have another idea. If you, hey, yes, a good idea here. If you've ever had a conversation with me, we probably never talked about politics because I don't talk about politics very often. But one thing I do admire about politicians is the ability to just put a sign in somebody's yard with your name on it. Like, I think that's, that's cool. That's really bold. And if I were ever running for office, I would put my name on, in yards all over the place. So, Andrika, when you get back home, you need to make a yard sign with your name on it and say, Hall of Famer, Andrika Jackson. So everyone who drives by knows. And it's going to be election. It is election season. We've got the election coming up. So everybody will see that. Matter of fact, I did it for you. How do we place this somewhere?
Not just for Andrea. Do we have more? Let's hand them out. Let's hand them out. Yep. All right. Chelsea? Yeah. Woo! Look at that. Heather? Yeah. And Mariah? Yeah. Yeah. Hall of Famers. Now, the plaque is going to be really cool at the Elam Center, but a yard sign is classy too now, okay? Now, just in case someone doesn't notice your yard sign, I got everybody a pink flamingo to put beside your yard sign. Now, how are they going to miss that, right? What do you think they'll see first, the sign or the pink flamingo? The pink flamingo, that's right. So, because I knew, I, I mean, Andrew, I, I almost called every one of your games, and I, I promise I heard you say 21 words. So I know you probably are not going to tell people you're a Hall of Famer, so we had to make sure that we got you a sign. Um, so I'm excited about today. I'm excited about the stories and inducting everyone into the Hall of Fame. And for our real introduction now, put your hands together for our Director of Athletics, Kurt McGuffin. Thanks, Chris. Um, I'm glad you guys got those signs for your yard because sometimes athletic directors get other signs in their yard and things don't go well. No, I appreciate you all being here. Uh, it's it's going to be a great event. It's going to be a great day. It's always a fun, fun weekend to have all of you back. And congratulations. Being in a Hall of Fame, to me, being in college athletics for 25 years is, is the pinnacle of what you accomplished you know, throughout your careers, from your parents and your coaches pushing you and you determining that you're going to be the best at your craft and to enter a Hall of Fame at any level, high school, college, and anything, is the ultimate, ultimate goal. And, and we want to congratulate you. Hopefully you have a great day with your families and your coaches if they're still here. I do want to introduce a few people in the room, and I'm not going to call out names, but our current Hall of Fame members that have been inducted before. If you could please stand and be recognized as current Hall of Fame members of the UT Martin Athletics. They still have their yard signs. Those flamingos are pretty, uh, they're not biodegradable, I don't think. Um, and then I want to recognize a few people. You know, these events take a lot of time. They take a lot of effort to put on, and some of it is um, the selection committee that does our Hall of Fame. So if anybody in the selection committee or committee that selects our Hall of Famers, please stand up and be recognized. <laughs> and last but not least, you know, the organization of this event, I, I do want to recognize Trudy Henderson, who works hard to put on this event and all of our other events for athletics. So Trudy. Again, we congratulate you. We can't wait to hear you speak. I hear you're going to give a great 20-minute presentation since he said you talk so well. <laughs> but we're, we're glad to have you back and enjoy the, enjoy the weekend. Thank you, Trevor. As you notice, five inductees, Jody Tiley is not with us, and um, she will be here next year to be inducted. Unfortunately, Jody lives across the pond in England, and Hurricane Ian canceled the flight and she could not make it in on Thursday and just could not arrange to be here this morning. So we talked to her. She's great with uh, being inducted in next year and we certainly do miss her. So looking forward to seeing her next year. So, Andrika, we'll jump right to you. I know that you're ready. <laughs> Andrika Jackson from the women's basketball team played for 2003-2007, a Decatur, Georgia native, a three-time all Ohio Valley Conference performer, first team, second team, and all freshman. She's the only player in program history for women's basketball to amass at least 1,000 points, 700 rebounds, 150 assists, 100 steals, and 400 free throws made as she ranked in the school's top five in points with over 1,300s, rebounds over 700, and free throws over 400. And basically, you did everything. Uh, posted averages of 13.1 points per game, seven rebounds a game while shooting 53.7% from the floor. I didn't realize that, but I mean, I can close my eyes and still see you scoring right there on the block in the paint over and over and over. My personal memories are that you were quiet, but you could be because you spoke with how you played. 
you were hardworking and extremely talented. And quite honestly, I'm going to sound old, but I'm a little off-put when these youngins in the NBA and other sports celebrate when they do something. Because, you know, my thought is, act like you've done it before. And Drika, you did that. You put on your hard hat, grabbed the lunch pail, and acted like this is what you did every day, a double-double. Even on Sundays, 365 days a, a year, that's who you were. I talked to Tara Tansel Gentry, who's here. How are you, Tara? Uh, she used words like determined, tough, strong defender, despite being undersized against some bigger OVC players, and indeed that was the case, and steady. Tara and I just talked about how steady you were, and dependable. Left-handed, played through contact, led by example. Last night we got in touch with, with uh, Gary Van Atta, uh, also one of your coaches. He remembers your AA coach telling uh, him that uh, dynamite comes in small packages. Amen to that. And uh, the AAU coach said, you got to see her play. Uh, when Gary met you and watched you, it was a no-brainer. A few players come out of high school ready to play at the collegiate level. You were ready. All freshman team, obviously. Tremendous rebounder, physically tough, a delight to coach. Another thought, when someone goes into the Hall of Fame and with their other inductees, you know, I always remember one game or something that stands out. With you, Andrika, it really didn't. And I was kind of disappointed. And then I realized, no, because she did the same thing every time you played. Like, you were almost a double-double machine. No one game truly stands out because you were so consistent and so steady, and that's the greatest compliment you could ever get. Every game you delivered, you were like UT Martin's version of the mailman <laughs> for four years. And just to back that up, Tara gave me one of the media guides. This is amazing. Your freshman year, you had 29 steals. Your sophomore year, you had 29 steals. Your junior year, you had 29 steals. Your senior year, and you got hurt, you had 32 steals. That's consistency, knowing what you're going to put out there every single time you went on the floor. Put your hands together for our newest Hall of Fame member, Andrika Jackson. everybody for being here. First of all, I want to thank God for everything he's blessed me with. It's truly an honor to be here today to celebrate my accomplishments throughout my college career. I couldn't have done it with any, without anybody but the glory of God. I want to thank the University of Tennessee at Martin for the nomination and believing in me when I attended the university. The first time I stepped on the campus, everyone embraced me with open arms. Being the only child, you can imagine how much I missed home. So the close-knit atmosphere really meant a lot to me. Coach T, thank you for pushing me to be better on and off the court. You challenged me mentally and physically to never settle and be the best player I can be. During games, you held me to a higher standard because you saw the leadership I possessed. And for that, I can't thank you enough. To my teammates, thank you for riding with me. Dina, thank you for going to battle with me every day in practice. I've never played against anyone with their strength and endurance. And I looked up to you for that because you pushed me those four years we played together. You were more than a teammate. You were a true friend to me. I also want to thank my family those that were here and those that could not make it for your support. You've given me the confidence and strength through the times of adversity. To my grandparents who are no, no, no longer with us, I hope I've made you proud. Last but not least, to my parents, Anthony and Gayla Jackson, I can't thank you enough for sacrificing your time and effort throughout all my years of playing basketball. You both pushed me to give my all, never give up, no matter who I played against, and leave it all on the court. You was always in the stands cheering, cheering me on, making sure everybody heard you, Dad. <laughs> and last, I would like to thank everybody for your support in being inducted in the Hall of Fame.
great right there. Congratulations, Andrew. Next up, Chelsea Jones Farm, softball, 2009 to 2012. Yeah, let's go. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. OVC Pitcher of the Year, OVC Tournament's Most Valuable Player, All OVC First Team, and a National Fast, Chip, Fast Pitch Coaches Association All Region Honoree in 2012, shattering seven school records as a senior. The Tullahoma, Tennessee native still ranks first in school history in wins with 56. Games started, 91. Innings pitched, 555.1. And strikeouts with 476. A major member of four combined OVC championships in her career, helping UT Martin to its first ever NCAA tournament appearance in 2009. Um, so many memories. Uh, I talked with Donnelly Canary yesterday while he was driving, which never do that, never do that. <laughs> Um, it's funny because Don, Don Lee was given the play-by-play -play of your career and also everyone else that was driving. Words he used to describe you, meticulous, patient, passionate. UTM was lucky to get your talent, he said. If others would have seen you, you probably would have never been at UT Martin or came to UT Martin. He talked about how hard you worked constantly. And, and I hope this is not offensive. I thought it was a great compliment, but that you had an arm like Popeye. <laughs> Without the spinach, it was just natural. Your rise ball was phenomenal. And we all remember the rise ball and just sitting in the stands and watching and thinking, well, I'm glad I'm not at bat right now. Your endurance off the charts, could throw all day, never tire, could throw three games and be ready to throw four. A leader, also a team mom. Every coach tells me that a team mom is so important. You were tough. Even played with a fractured foot your senior year and no one knew it. How'd you get away with that? <laughs> one of the funniest stories he told me uh, was about your mom at a game. And during the game, uh, Coach Canary was watching and your mom kept raising her, her arm. And he's like, what in the world is going on? And periodically, she would raise her arm. And she's like, is she stealing signs from the other team and giving them to our team and I don't know it? Turns out she had a pinched nerve, and the only way that she could get relief was to raise her arm. I love that story. And Chelsea, now an assistant coach, and giving back all of the knowledge that you gained, and again, passing along that toughness and competitiveness and uh, that ability to just win. Put your hands together for Chelsea Jones Farmer, newest member of the UT Martin Hall of Fame. Thank you for the introduction, Chris. I've witnessed you give a lot of those, so I'm very honored to have one today. To my fellow inductees, I understand the sacrifices that were made to earn the right to stand behind this podium, and I'm humbled to share the stage with you today. What an honor it truly is to be inducted into an all-female class celebrating the 50th anniversary of Title IX. I do not take for granted what Title IX has done for female athletes, or the fact that I played and now coach on a field named after a true pioneer in women's athletics. I would be remiss if I didn't start my speech off by thanking a few of the people who helped me get to this moment in my life. Of course, I wouldn't be standing here today without the divine intervention of God, and I pray that this speech glorifies him as well. Daniel, although you've played more of a major role in my adult life than you did in my playing days, your influence and patience was not wasted on me. During my playing days, you were the friendly face that we all needed to see. After my career was over, you provided the joy, the faith, and the grace to not just support me through my wandering, but to wait patiently for God to bring me back to you, and I am so thankful. Thank you for being the calm to my storm, for supporting me in all the ways that I need to be supported, and thank you for being the absolute best dad to Oakley. Thank you for making me a better person and being my forever teammate and my forever family. To my travel and high school coaches, one of whom who surprised me here today, I owe them for always believing in me. I was very shy as a young child and very timid. They saw something in me that I never saw in myself, and they never gave up on coaching me. To my teammates, this is truly an award that I share with each of you. 
Leah and Jenny, who have entered the Hall of Fame before me, I wouldn't be standing here today without all of the extra reps you guys took, the discipline both of you practiced, or the faith in Jesus that you consistently both pushed me to have. Kristen, thank you for teaching me that being myself is absolutely enough. You are the true example of how to love others well, and I'm so proud to have you in my corner. Lydia, thank you for the joy and the laughs. You have the most contagious laugh still to this day, and not a moment goes by that I'm not thankful for that laugh during the hard times. You've always taught me about enjoying life's little pleasures, and that laughter is truly the best medicine. Becca, thank you for being the voice that I always heard in the dugout and the voice that never stopped. I really needed that throughout the season. Kayla, thank you for teaching me the ability to seize the day. I will never forget your first scrimmage of your freshman year after you had just come off a serious near-death head injury and I nailed you in the head with a pitch. <laughs> you fell to the ground, I cried, um, and in that moment, I would have never guessed that you would have ended up being my maid of honor on my wedding day. <laughs> Erica, I'm not sure 30 seconds on this podium is enough to thank you, but I'll try. I could never stand here and put our over 20 years of friendship, half of which were spent pitching and catching together um, into words. It is because of your toughness, your persistence, and your extreme love of the game and desire to be a champion that I am standing here in front of you today. Catchers are rarely the people who get the spotlight, but the spotlight should shine brightest on you today. From the many walks to the mound that you had to make to the hours you spent catching me on our only day off of the week, I truly can't imagine what my softball playing life would be without you in it, and I wouldn't want to. By the way, let's both be thankful that uh, being mic'd up was not a thing back then. <laughs> and last but not least, the people who have had the longest influence in my life, my parents. This is an award that I share with both of you as well. Mom, thank you for teaching me to always leave every place I go better than I found it. Whether it was a room that we used that needed to be cleaned up, or a softball program that needed a group to come in and change the place. You truly taught me the importance of making a positive mark wherever I went. Dad, thank you for teaching me the value of hard work. Whether it was getting out in the yard on Christmas or Thanksgiving, or bringing the ball and glove on vacation, or should I say planning our one vacation of the year around a softball tournament that just happened to be in Florida. Sorry, Mom. Uh, you always made sure that pitching was a priority in our lives. I say our lives because it really was our journey. You got me a gym membership before I could even drive and took time out of your day every day to catch me after work. You drove me an hour and a half and back to lessons that were more expensive than the gas and the food that it took to get us there. You suffered bloody noses, bruised legs, and who knows what else. And honestly, after attempting to catch our own pitchers, I, I really don't know how you did that. And mom, I know why you stayed out of it. It's, it's hard. Mom. I love you and I thank you so much. Dad, there honestly aren't any words that can sum up the thanks that I owe both of you. And as an adult, I just want to say that I realize the major sacrifices that were made to get me to where I am today. So instead of saying thank you, I'll just say that you can keep the plaque at your house. <laughs> <laughs> to my current players, if you gave me an opportunity to play just one more year, I don't think I would take it. <laughs> I knew my body was finished on my very last game in Tuscaloosa at the Regional in 2012, but I also wouldn't take it because coaching is truly a work of heart and I absolutely love coaching you guys and I love coaching at this program. If it weren't for my family, my blood family and my ATM family, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today. This may come to, as a shock to a lot of you that don't know me, uh, but until my senior year of high school, I didn't even really know I wanted to play college ball. I, I really wanted to be in a sorority, and I was really questioning whether or not I was good enough to play at this level. <coughs> Lo and behold, this small school out of West Tennessee called me, and my parents thought it would be a good idea that I would come on a visit here. Uh, on the drive here, I lost cell phone service, and I told them from the back of the car that this was not the place for me. I wasn't coming to school here. I, had, I hadn't even gotten here yet. Fast forward a few weeks and um, I was verbally committing to continue my playing career at the University of Tennessee at Martin. 
If you would have asked me then, I couldn't have told you that this program would not just be my family for four years, but my family for life. I gained sisters who stood by me in my wedding, prayed for me and my husband while we were struggling to start our family, and are, of course, sitting among you today. UTM continues to be a place I'm proud to call home and that I'm confident in bringing my daughter to every single day. To anyone in this room who is newer to UT Martin, just remember that if you give your whole heart to this place, you'll receive it tenfold. Softball is not who I am, it's what I do. Family is who I am, and I'm blessed to call my job, my work, and these people my family. Thank you, Chelsea. I've heard a lot of speeches, and that's one of the best back then. And thank you. We're honored to have you as part of the department and as part of our softball team. Thank you. Next up, Heather Key. I was looking so forward to seeing you. Heather Key, come and play volleyball from 2000 to 2003. Look the same. Look the exact same. Hailing from Chesterfield, Missouri, Heather was a two-time All-OVC recipient, nabbing all newcomer and honorable mention accolades. To this day, ranks fourth in program history in kills, 1,132, and digs, 1,234, and she is one of just three players in school history to have at least 1,000 kills and 1,000 digs in a career. A key member of back-to-back -back OVC championship squads in 01 and 02, helping guide the Skyhawks to their first ever NCAA tournament berth in 2002. At the time, I was helping keep stats. You were strong, fierce, competitive, and the thing about Heather is when she walked under the floor, you kind of assumed we had already won. That's, that's an awesome trait there. We talked to Chris Rushing on the phone, your coach. He used the same words, passionate, strong, competitive, winner, as a person, extremely fun, supportive, energetic, friendly. Said your competitive drive was unmatched. You wanted to win and you loved to win. You played with so much heart and passion that it was infectious to the rest of the team. That was obvious as we watched. You raised the standard for the program and for your teammates. On a personal note, uh, Chris wrote that you made a great impact in his life. He said, Coach Rushing said, she impacted my entire family. She was always fun, energetic with my own children, and they loved her. In fact, in 2001, we let our kids get a baby kitten. Do you know this story? You do know this story. When I asked the kids what the cat's name should be, they all said Kia. So they had a cat named Kia living with them for 18 years. Yeah, Tennessee, North Carolina, Idaho, and Utah. Fun fact, house cats can live 18 years, outdoor cats live about two to three. So if you want your cat to live a long time, keep it inside. They said every single time they called the cat's name Kia, they thought about you and smiled. What a tremendous honor. And that happened for 18 years. So now they need to get another cat named Kia is what I think. Rob Bean, who's over there, who was an assistant at the time, just talked about how tough you were, too, and said, well, of course, she's from a family of NHL players. She should be tough. But also said, and I thought this was interesting, that you had two opportunities from a scholarship standpoint. One would be to come to UT Martin and play volleyball. The other would, was to go to Clemson and be on the rowing team. Water oh, the water? water okay, well, wow. so and you chose UT Martin. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for choosing the University of Tennessee at Martin. Uh, you made us better, you raised the standard. Put your hands together for us.
I returned home and coached 13 years at the high school I actually went to, at Westminster Christian Academy. And I, you know, I've always loved playing. Coaching, I was so unsure about. Um, but I ended up having a super successful career as a coach. Um, I went to state two times with my high school. Um, in 2012, we actually won state. And um, at the same time, I was running the volleyball club, and um, so um, right now, currently, we have like seven boys teams, and we have nine girls teams, and in three weeks, we're putting together 11 more teams, um, so we have about 27 teams in our program, and it's such a big part of what I do. It consumes pretty much all my time, um, but the whole point of it is that in the last four years of the club life, we sent 45 kids on to play college volleyball. Um, and it's so cool. I've taken just my love and passion that I got here, really. If I didn't have the experiences that I had when I was at UT Martin, I would never be able to pay it forward. I talk about UT Martin all the time. I talk about the coaches, I talk about the staff, I talk about my experiences, I talk about all the food I ate, all the working out I did. Um, and it was just like such a pivotal part of my life. Um, so my, I just want to say, I, my only hope is to pass that on to all my kids and um, the people that brought that experience to me were the local fans, the families who like brought us food to the locker room, came to every game, um, the Beams, they did the same exact thing. Uh, my professors, my trainers. I was in the training room, Bart. I know I saw Bart earlier. I don't know where he went, but I was with Bart before class, before practice, <laughs> after practice, for four years, and with, um, I had just great trainers and people who took care of me constantly. Um, Danelle, the athletic department, Bill, I was gonna talk about Bill, and um, I know he's in heaven, and I know he's a good man, and. He was such a great example to this athletic department and Trudy, all these people were here so to come back and see you guys is just such an amazing thing. Um, my coach, Chris Brushy, I talk about how great he is, that's why I, I feel like I've become a better coach is because I had Chris Brushy and I had Rob and I had Jill and I had Dale and I had all these people around me and you know I wasn't from Tennessee, everybody was from Tennessee and I came from St. Louis and they made this place my home and made me feel safe. Um, my teammates, um, Lindsay McNair, who's in the Hall of Fame, and Rachel Hollers, who's in the Hall of Fame, we played together three of my four years. And they just, I mean, we just brought out the best in each other. So I was, I'm really blessed to have all the people here and to have all my teammates. Um, I will say that, um, my volleyball journey would not have started without my siblings, who are all here. Um, I'm the youngest of four, and they have constantly pushed me to be my best, and we're all very competitive. Um, Holly, Wendy, and Gabe, and Tilly, thank you for being here. Um, my mom, who is also here, Jennifer, um, was the best example of how to be a better teammate at every turn. She made trips all over the country to watch me play, and always told me how many hawks she counted along the way. Uh, I think people believe I got my athletic ability from my dad who played hockey in Atlanta and St. Louis, but my mom did play college volleyball, and although we always joke, I think there were nine people on the court when she played. <laughs> um, they are the best though. I'm around parents of all these kids in our organization and parents can be the best or they can be the absolute worst to an athlete's career. And I always actually talk about my parents and how they just made me such, made me bring out the best in whoever was around me. And it's because they really brought out the best in me. So I really, really thank you, mom, for just being the best example of like, not just being a great mom, but just a strong woman. And it's so cool for you guys to all talk about your relationship with the Lord because it's the best gift she's ever given me. It's my relationship with the Lord. Um, second to, uh, volleyball is second to all of that, so I really appreciate that. Now, I want to thank my husband. 
When I met my husband, I was elated. I finally met someone who was not affiliated with volleyball in any way. Um, he had not played volleyball, uh, so I didn't have to talk about volleyball. I was so excited. Um, and then after realizing the only time together would be in the gym, he turned his passion for coaching basketball into a passion for coaching volleyball. We've been coaching together <laughs> for 10 years and finished as high as third in the country with one of our club volleyball teams. Um, he's a great coach, he's an amazing husband, and he's the best accountability partner. Although, when we did get the news about the Hall of Fame, um, I called, he was out and I called him and I said, hey, I thought it was gonna be the entire team. And I said, it's me. And he's like, what did you do? <laughs> And I actually, I was, it's been 18 years, so I'm like, I don't know. And I like, looked up UTM and I read the thing and I'm like, oh my gosh, I did all that? I'm like, I must have put that way far back. Um, I, knew I, went, I knew I was captain all four years, I knew I made the all freshman team. Um, I thought I was the captain because I was a little bit more outspoken than Chris, rushing it many times. He never had to stand up because I knew the refs and I, I got it, I'll take care of it. Um, so I was, I was very shocked and I was very humbled that it was just me because I wouldn't be here without my team and this team and um, God putting me in this place. I had plans and the verse all set up and I had plans and they always say God just laughs at your plans. Um, but he truly put me here at the exact time and he does this in my life every time. I start going this way and he redirects me this way and um, so I'm just, I couldn't have picked a better place to be and I couldn't have picked better people to be around. You guys completely, uh, Chris told me it was the safest campus in the South. He was trying to sell me on all these different things on our visit and I truly did feel safe and I felt supported and I felt loved. And it's probably a huge reason why our team thrived and like we did was because we had such great support from everybody here. So um, hopefully I get to meet a lot of you guys around today and thank you very much. I want to tell your husband she was good. <laughs> yeah, she was really good. Congratulations, Heather. Hold on, you got your plan. I know your yard sign, you still have it right. Next up, Mariah Clinky won soccer 2011-2014. Mariah was a two-time All-OBC First Team honoree in the 2012 OBC Tournament MVP, one of only two players in school history to hold that title. Still ranks first in UT Martin history in saves with 346, that's incredible, victories 43, and his second all-time 21 shutouts. The Highland Illinois native was as important uh, to UT Martin's program as any player who's ever played here. A four-year combination of OBC titles, leading the Skyhawks to their first ever NCAA tournament appearance in 2011. Talk with Coach Bill McNamara, words he used to describe you fearless, and anyone who watched you play knows that, and just a fierce competitor. Came to UT Martin in your freshman year and won the starting job at your position as goalkeeper, which is very rare as a freshman with that position because of the learning curve. You did it and you were great. Success as a program in your tenure, if you looked at a chart, they're right together. It's not a coincidence. You raised the standard. Coach mentioned how you not only dominated and made us better in games, but you also made our players better. Our forwards were better in practice because when they saw the opponent's goalkeeper instead of you, <laughs> they smiled because they knew it would be easier. Played your senior year with a torn ACL and just fought through it and was great. And coach and everyone who was around you will say how rewarding it was to watch you as you improved every single year, which is what the great players do. And you went from being this quiet person in nature to this leader and to this tremendous competitive soccer player. After graduating, and this is impressive, pay attention, at the age of 24, if you Google her, uh, became the first female officer to lead an assault amphibian vehicle platoon while in the U.S. Marine Corps. Let's give her a round of applause for serving our country. Look it up. And, this is also online, there is 
a video for Coach McNamara. His first ever really good Gatorade bath happened because of you after the 2012 championship. Put your hands together for Mariah.
the world has changed a little bit. The world is smaller. It's like everyone knows UT Martin, even in California now and in Missouri. And thank you for choosing the University of Tennessee at Martin. Thank you for coming here and making it better. And, and bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. For our inductees, if you'll make your way to the front with your plaques, we'll get a lot of pictures for social media, and you can leave your yard sign at your table, and we'll make sure it gets to your vehicle. Thank you. Have a great day.